sister, and Tootie got covered up, but she's an overweight Yorkie, and she loves people. I'm really excited that you're all here. I really appreciate it because Green Dot really means a lot to me. I feel like it's something that we can carry about throughout our life, and we can really make it. Also, a career health educator at the Long Southern Hero campus. Um, I worked there for about a year and a half, and I first learned about Green Dot um, just because I did my internship there. And so I didn't actually hear a persuasive speech like some of you guys did, but um, like I said, that's how I got involved. So um, these are my puppies. Uh, Lucy's on the left. Lucy's on the right. I don't know if anybody has ever watched that old show. I love Lucy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why she has red hair. So. <laughs> um, I have a second picture because Lucy is my favorite. <laughs> um, these are my crazy wild little brothers. They always, they're addicted to games. Um, and when I was trying to look for pictures, this was like the only one I could even find with half their clothes on. So <laughs> there's two of them now. Okay, so today, um, we're going to be giving out some chips, green dot chips, and it's it'll reinforce content and knowledge um, regarding green dot. But first, before we start handing out chips and playing more games, um, you guys will each find a note card in your booklet, um, and if you guys can just take a minute and write your name on it, you can hold a hot dog, hamburger, or whatever. Um, just write your name on it, and so I'll give you about one minute to do that. And then after you do that, each group will get two, just two minutes to come up with like a team name or a team mascot or both, um, and then write it on the center card in the middle. So first I'll give you a minute just for your name. And by the way, the reason that we're giving out chips is because when the training's all over, you can use your chips to cash in on some of this beautiful swag you see. And whichever <laughs> team, whichever team has the most chips at the end will get to pick first. So like. There's only a couple water bottles. So it's not nothing. But you'll get the first thing. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and my name's Jay. I actually also work at the Wellness Center, but only for a quarter, so I'm still new to wellness, so I thought I'd go through training. I'm Travis, I'm she just said. <laughs> Tony, and I'm Joe. Um, we're green qualitators. There's really not a lot of reason behind it, but we're green. <laughs> um, my name is Amelia. I'm Rachel. I'm Arthur. I'm Paul. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Okay, so as you can see, you all have clickers in front of you. Um, probably all of you guys have used these. Has anyone not used it before? No. But anyways, we're going to be using these clickers throughout the day just to um, get a sense of what you're thinking and also what other people around you are thinking. And um, so just like probably the classes that you used it before, only aggregate data will show up on the screen. So like it won't be your individual choice. So it's totally anonymous and just like percentages will show up. So um, and you don't have to like point it at the screen or the computer or anything. You can do it behind your back or the table, whatever. So it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to start out with just a sample question to get it going. Actually, can someone read the quote first? Does a volunteer want to read it? I'll read it. I long to accomplish a great and noble task, but it is my chief duty to accomplish humble tasks as though they were great and noble. The world is moved along not only by the mighty shoves of its heroes, but also by the aggregate of the tiny pushes of each honest worker, Helen Keller. And throughout the day, we'll also have more words of wisdom, which just kind of correlates with what we're going to talk about next in the section. Um, yeah, so we'll see more of these throughout the day. So if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Invisibility, ability to fly, superhuman strength, x-ray vision, or the ability to morph into anything? So you choose one of these. This is just something to get us going. <laughs> Everybody in? There should be a button. Does anybody's clicker when you're clicking the button not show a solid green light on it? Yeah, it's a splash in green and red. <laughs> just try another one to see if there's that. Oh, I'll just bring in the other one. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> if not, we can just try, try it out. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we want to see what we want. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to have superhuman strength. I think if you can work into anything, then like, you would. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you could work into anything, you would really need extra vision. Okay, so we have one more. Uh, what year are you? Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, grad student, or other? Okay, so first, now I'm just going to talk a little bit about car-based personal violence, um, just so you guys can get a better understanding of what we're going to talk about. Um, so car-based personal violence is any form of violence. Um, it might include partner violence, sexual assault, stalking, or any other uses of force, threat, or intimidation, or harassment of an individual. Um, it might include alcohol or drugs. A lot of times alcohol is involved. 
And these acts are inclusive and can be committed by strangers, friends, family members, acquaintances, partners, um, anybody. And we're using this term, power-based personal violence, because it's a more inclusive term. And we want you to recognize that it can happen in any type of relationship, straight, gay, any type. Um, it can happen to anyone. And so both the perpetrator and the victim, or the red daughter um, and the victim, can be anyone, and of either sex. So just always keep that in mind. Okay, so let me ask you another question, and please be honest. You don't have to answer the way you think we want you to answer. We really want to get a sense of what you're thinking. How much do you believe we can actually measurably reduce the number of victims of power-based personal violence? Are you positively certain, fairly certain, maybe doubtful but hopeful, or you don't think we can, but maybe we should try anyway? So that's pretty good. Um, most of you guys are certain or fairly certain that um, we can make a difference, but it's also neat to see that even if you don't think we can, some people um, think we should still try anyways, so that's pretty neat. Sometimes for me it depends on the day of the week which one of these I would choose. <laughs> okay, so now just um, to get into the more, um, more the terms of power-based personal violence. First we'll talk about stalking. Um, and it's a course of conduct targeted at an individual or a group that would cause a reasonable person to feel afraid. Um, this might include following someone, maybe constantly Facebooking them, checking up on their status, or finding out where they are or what they're doing. Um, maybe constantly texting, or calling, or unwanted letters, or gift, gifts. And here on campus, 9% of Central students have experienced